Welcome to Frequency Matters, the RFM Microwave Update Series. I'm Pat Hindle, and I'm here with my co-host, Eric Heim. In this episode, we're going to take a look at our cover feature for the October Passive and Control Components issue. The cover story is written by Brian Walker from JFW Industries about choosing the right programmable attenuator for receiver sensitivity testing. It reviews the basics of receiver sensitivity testing and describes some of the considerations for selecting the right attenuators depending on the signal chain and the standards that you're being used. Uh, Eric, what do we have for our technical features? Well, thanks, Pat. Uh, we had a good article from Crane talking about using the multi-mix technology that they've developed in their Merrimack Industries facility uh, to stack filters in a common footprint. And the premise is that as transceivers become more channelized, you need more filters and the available space becomes an issue, especially at lower frequencies. So the article looks at how they solve the challenges of stacking interdigital filters, so that's interesting. Uh, we also had an article from Thomas Bogle of Rodi and Schwartz and Dr. Ulrich Rodi that looks at how to optimize transceiver performance, uh, meaning the transmit and receive chains are in proximity. And the article focuses on sub 600 megahertz applications, but the techniques and philosophies are general. And it's a good look at interference and intermodulation, uh, along with filter selection and placement. Yeah, and we had a special guest join us for this episode. Keith Benson, Director of RF and Microwave Amplifier and Phased Array IC Products at Analog Devices. He joined me to discuss the IC market and its trends and some of the semiconductor technologies. Let's take a look at a clip from that now. You know, what factors do you consider when you're choosing a semiconductor platform? You know, what goes into that decision? I think the first thing we may think about is about the cost. Is there a certain cost target with a requirement that would push us more of a silicon-based solution? You know, gallium nitride today is still largely four inch based wafers. Um, gallium arsenide is still largely six inch based wafers. Um, so if you really want to get the economies of scale of a 12 inch wafer, you'd push towards silicon. So I think that would probably be the first consideration is there a benefit to using silicon uh, from a cost perspective. Then next, I think we look at performance. Um, is there something about the requirement that it has a really high power density aspect to it that might push us towards gallium nitride? Is there something about the requirement that would have a spy interface or a, me a memory that's included to it? We maybe look towards silicon. Or if there's something um, with a with a low noise figure requirement or high linearity in the receive that may push us towards um, gallium arsenide. And then like we've talked about, if there's more of a, of a complete solution requirement where we maybe combine multiple semiconductors at the package level, we may be looking more of like at a SIP solution where we can um, solve more of the problem for the customer. Um, so I think those are some of the things we think about when we look at the, the different technologies and you know where we combine it at the IC level or do we combine it at the package level and, and how much is the right uh, mix for the um, for the requirement. So it was very interesting to talk with Keith about the IC market. I hope you enjoy that interview. Turning to the news, Cesium Astro, SES, and Hughes announced a successful over-the-air demonstration of a scalable K-band active phased array terminal for satellite communications. The demonstration was conducted by Cesium Astro and it paired the company's medium form factor terminal with Hughes software defined modem connecting through the SES Geo satellite. This news is a key milestone on Cesium Astro's roadmap to fly qualified K band terminals on the commercial and defense platforms. And they recently announced that they were demonstrating that terminal on the US Air Force MQ 9A Reaper. Uh, so they're making a lot of progress there. And also keeping on the SATCOM topic, uh, Keysight Technologies introduced a new phased array antenna control and calibration solution. It's an over-the-air calibration and characterization solution that enables satellite designers developing active electronically scanned arrays for satellite communications applications, and it rapidly helps them test their designs early for validation. Eric, what did you see in the news? Well, I saw that Ericsson released the, the latest update to their Microwave Outlook report. And the report is bullish on E-band spectrum for 5G backhaul. And it also forecasts a gradual increase in fiber versus microwave for backhaul. Uh, they're forecasting that the fiber microwave split will be about 50-50 by 2030. And the report is more than just a forecast, however. Uh, it also looks at innovation in antenna designs and how AI can lower OPEX for transport networks. Uh, so that's worth a look. And uh, supporting the rumblings that we're all hearing, the Delaware Group is forecasting that worldwide telecom capex will drop by seven percent. 
by 2025. And they define telecom as wireless and wireline, but they say that wireless is the main culprit for the decline. And uh, despite growth in India, that won't be enough to offset deceleration in North America. Uh, so that bears watching. Yeah, I definitely heard that from some of the uh, vendors at European Microwave Week, and we had a talk at EDICon Online that also addressed that from Joe Madden. So uh, turning to the events, I will be heading to New York City for the Brooklyn 6G Summit, and it's hosted by Nokia and NYU each year. This will be their 10th year, and the summit will bring together like 50 speakers and panelists, and they're all like experts and leaders in their field, so it's a great event. And the summit will also showcase 20 live demonstrations and it will award the annual Wireless Pioneer Award at the event, so I'm really looking forward to that. And also I wanted to note that Comcast 2023 that takes place in Israel and it was scheduled for November, it will be postponed for obvious reasons and hope everybody is safe there. How about you for events, Eric? Uh, well, I'll be going to AOC in December and I'm looking forward to it. There's a good roster of companies that will be exhibiting uh, lots of familiar names from the, uh, the more commercial conferences that we run into, along with many of the companies that you'd expect at a defense show. Uh, the theme is superiority in the electromagnetic spectrum, and spectrum's a big topic in all market segments, uh, but control of that spectrum takes on a different meaning in defense applications, uh, so that'll be interesting. And just a reminder, EDICon Online takes place every Wednesday in October, covering topics in RF, microwave, signal integrity, power integrity, and EMC, EMI. And we're halfway through the event, and the first two days have been big successes. Uh, so there's still time to catch the last two days, so don't miss out. And register now at EDICononline.com. That wraps up this episode. Our sponsors are RFMW and Analog Devices. RFMW is a technical distributor of RF and microwave products, and now power management products as well. When you start your next design, consider their multiple product lines. And Analog Devices is a leader in the design, manufacture, and marketing of a broad portfolio of high-performance analog, mixed signal, and digital signal processing integrated circuits used in virtually all types of electronic equipment. And remember, as a member of the industry, a subscription to Microwave Journal is free, so please visit our site and subscribe today if you're not already a reader. Thanks for watching, and please, please join us next time for another Frequency Matters.